Hello! Good evening! Silent Searchlight, Cthulhu, and Nansen, A132. I see you are here. Good evening and welcome, and... Well, let's see how this thing works. We're working on, of course, you've probably recognized this. This is the... Um, this is the Von Braun vehicle, and I'm trying to recreate it in real-scale solar system. Things are very much different. Hmm, okay. So, oh, turpentine. People talking about turpentine. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. This is actually looking pretty good. Now, I just need to fit in a few more, a few more rockets here. Like, how many? Wait, I need to fit in four more. Darn. That might be a problem. You know what I could do, though? Is fit... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Do that. And that, and then the six in the middle, I shall fit a little more elegantly. And that gets me up to 22. There, that looks like a serious one. Commander Cyanide reporting for duty. As in, are you mean like duty as in space poop? Because, you know, we do have the space poop challenge thing that uh, NASA is doing. Which, of course, is all... Very interesting. I keep meaning to record a video about it, but I'm always very... I always forget, basically. I'm a terrible person and should never be trusted to do anything on time. Uh, yeah, space poop. I know all about that stuff. Uh, as they say, I know the poop. Okay, that's not working. Do we not have any... Oh, God, it's huge. We have the ginormous struts... And we have the tiny struts. Do we? Where are the intermediate struts? You you mock me. You mock me. I tell you. How about this? I beam. Yeah, we'll do that. Da, 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 da. Spoop. Yeah. So what NASA is doing is like a ah. This is it. Ah, yes. There we go. But we only need one. No, just the one. Just the one. So there's like a reverse crowdfunding site where the idea is that an organization like NASA can come along and say, hey, we would really like someone to solve this particular problem, such as what to do with poop in spacesuits. And the idea, of course, is that, you know, then entrepreneurs and smart people from all over the world will get together and say, hey, NASA, we have exactly the thing you want to do here. Look, give me the $30,000 prize. And they're like, okay, we are convinced you are the prize winner. Right, so that's the theory. And what they've done is they've said, hey, we would like if some smart person out there could help solve the problem of space poop. Yes. So yeah, uh, video coming at some point. At some point, I'm not sure when, but uh, I've got a lot of things to do before then. Right now, I'm still trying to build this thing out. Uh, build. So yeah, build out the Von Braun launch ferry thing, right? Here we go. See, it's the, like the Brian ferry. I should actually try launching this. So yeah, um, lots going on. I see here. I'm just going to test this thing. Unfortunately, yeah. So I think the engines in this might be a little more powerful than I'd expect. Also, why is this not throttling? Probably because I have avionics limits. Ah, let's revert flight to vehicle assembly. This could be a problem. A person who has a PhD in space poop they, oh yeah, insufficient avionics, so we're going to need uh, a, a ton more avionics in this thing. Fantastic. Sad, well, is this, uh, like, here's the thing, the Saturn instrument section is slightly too small for this. <laughs> That's how big this thing is. That is supposed to be, like, the Saturn, uh, Saturn 1. Do they have the Saturn V version of the same thing? Because we're going to need something really huge for this. How much mass does this thing handle? It handles mass up to 5... Wait, 1.5 million? No, 1,500 tons. So we're going to need a couple of those. We are actually having tea tonight. I'm very, very tired because I had to get up very, very early for a very, very, very special thing. 
Uh, I was doing i was answering all sorts of questions on american history this morning does anybody know why can anybody guess come on uh we need to actually figure this out we're not going to use auto shape we are going to use auto struts oh and you know what <coughs> pardon me just going to stretch this thing out here and obviously i'm not referencing some orifice uh base top what am i what am i trying to do here that's the height no that's that do, 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 do. how big is this thing this is bottom is nine meters across holy moly the base is nine meters there we go <laughs> this is huge uh, height, I should shrink. Can I shrink that down? No, that does not make any difference to this thing here. Uh, no, I did not quit Apple and become a high school history teacher because uh, I have to live in the Bay Area. And uh, actually, I'm not allowed to teach that because of all sorts of things like that. Uh, why does this... It looks like I've attached a partial stage here and I can't select it to remove it. That is fantastic. Uh-huh. Oh, you know what? Silent Searchlight. That's... I, I disagree with that. You know why? Because that is not one of the questions they ask. Right? They have a very specific list of questions and... You can go onto their website and look at them. In fact, you know, if you want, people here could try and answer some of those questions. For example, okay, uh, can you name one of the authors of the federal Federalist Papers? Bonus points if you can sing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, 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 max size cylinder star. Oh, no. Oh, wait, that's what we're going on. Cylinders. There we go. We'll stretch this thing upwards. Franklin! Oh, God, you guys. Madison. Yeah, Madison is one of them. But the, who's the one that you might sing his name these days? Yes! Alexander Hamilton. Yes, I, never mind. There's a million things I haven't done, but writing the Federalist Papers was not one of the things he hadn't done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is this so annoyingly shaped? Okay, why is this invisible? I think I think this is the problem. I've picked some invisible fairings. That's wrong. Let's do the long march fairings. See if that works. Ah, oh, that's more like it. Ah, there we go. Um. I think John Adams... So the Federalist Papers were basically after... Uh, so if you don't know US history, George Washington was president. And then... But at that point, the Constitution hadn't been written. So he basically became president after leading, you know, the US to victory during the Revolutionary War. But... Uh, and he was president for eight years and then he kind of stepped down. But there was still some crisis as to whether the you know, articles, the, the Constitution should be adopted and things like that. So there were several essays published to basically say, yes, we should have this versus we shouldn't, you know. And the Constitution is, of course, the ultimate law of the land that everybody has to follow. And I'm going to point out, yes, including the president. So, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the first true president, that's a good question. You mean the first president that wasn't, uh, was uh, actually born in the U.S.? That's a good question. Uh, uh, uh. So I gotta figure out, I, this this thing is wrong here. The first sovereign republic to voluntarily join the United States was Hawaii, wasn't it? Oh no, it was uh, it was California. I don't know. It's Commander Cyanide. We'll have none of that around here. We will ha we will not be talking about anyone that uh, chooses to disregard the Constitution. That would not be a good example to set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The U.S. Virgin Islands? Really? Okay. 
Uh, people are asking various things. The California was a republic. It wasn't really much of one. Uh, it is kind of interesting. How big is this thing looking? Oh, man. You can't really see the whole thing right now. But we're, we're getting there. We are getting there. So let's actually do... Let's make it blue. Blue is always a good one. Where is it? Yellow. Atlas. Blue! Yeah, so we can see the different stages. <sighs> Have I had Fat Tug from Victoria... Fat Tug IPA. Someone's asking if I've tried Fat Tug IPA. And no, I haven't. So actually, what I'm going to do... Let me just finish this up. I've got to find these things, and that sound, by the way, is my printer, which is deciding to clean its printer heads and all that stuff. It's doing its, it's doing the printer equivalent of a cat licking its genitals, uh, but very, the wrong time. It's going, nee! very annoying, very, very annoying. Like, it's very distracting to have that going on. You ever notice that, the cat kind of licking themselves, like, no, not something you want to have. Where is this? rocket that I want. This is it, the Viking. So I'm using the Viking. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I necessarily like it, but you can't really get away from it at this point, right? I mean, in principle, uh, I do... I do. I hate musicals, but hey, you know, I, I like that one, so, you know, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, crap! Crap, 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 crap. Get back. No, get on there! I've just, I've just detached this whole thing. Oh, no, we're getting eight of them. No, no. <laughs> oh, I've got to save this thing before it implodes. Uh, also, what I'm going to do, tank type not found, should be fuselage structural. I'm going to make this a structural tank as well. Tank type. Oh, crap. Service. Uh, actually, this one can be like a regular default tank, and we do 56 UH. We're not using the same chemical mixture because there isn't an engine that matches it right now. Okay, so the vessel is now 3,000 tons, and it has a total of 10 kilometers per second of delta V. And the problem is these engines are way better than the ones that we have. So I'm probably going to go back and tweak these engines, find some place to, uh, you know, modify them, whatever. Oh, man. I was also, incidentally, I don't know if you saw my comment on Twitter, I learned today, after, uh, you know, reading over the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, that the United States National Anthem is the only national anthem I can think of that mentions rockets, and therefore, you know, awesome. <laughs> so, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to stagger these in a little. Oh, crap! It did it again! There. Make that happen. Very carefully. Okay, so how many have I got? I've got... Oh! Ja, to you! Curses! Curses on you and your engine placement. This is getting really hard because I can't move the camera in the correct location. Spain's national anthem is the only one without words. Also, you know, uh, China, they what part of their national anthem is all about building a big, great wall. So, you know, I, I can see... Uh, I can see that becoming part of things. Okay, so how have we got? We've got... 8 by 8 by 8, that is 32. We still have a lot to go. Yeah, the the US National Anthem is about the flag still seen flying over Fort McHenry after it has been bombarded. And they talk about the rockets and the shells and the bombs streaming. and So, yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're up to 40, so I need at least another 8. 
and that gets me to 48 and then we need four in the middle so I can cut this down to four now how do I oh. come on yes okay that that is looking awesome and let me see what we oh man okay here's the problem first stage we're only getting one thrust of um, 1.2, so I need to shorten this just a little. Length gets shortened, so we get some more thrust at the bottom. Uh, should I shorten it anymore? That gets me thrust uh, 1.2. Hmm. Yeah, no, we're not going to do through the fire and the flames. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> uh, you know, like, if you want to do the rock national anthem thing, I think Jimi Hendrix has you covered. No need to go any further than, uh, you know, the man. Okay, so we're going to put supersonic wings on this now. We need four of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is basically the same thing that I built with Amy... Uh, but I'm now building it at, at scales required for um, realistic you know, realism overhaul, right? That's what we're doing here. Okay, this is looking good. I just wish I could zoom out and see this whole thing. But obviously I've practiced this a little, so you know we're we're doing a little better than we would otherwise do. There. That'll work. Should also probably... Let, let's see how this thing works. I don't know if my staging is correct. In fact, my staging is almost certainly wrong. Oh yeah, we get that. That should go just go together. And that should go together. This is all going to go at once and then these things fire. Okay. Save. And launch. Don't I have hangar... Actually, I disabled hangar extender after it started causing problems with pan with um control surfaces were getting copied over with the wrong symmetry and I couldn't fix it so I was very disappointed oh come on I by the way I've been playing a lot of rock band lately once again okay how does this look it's pausing oh it's stabilized for physics load the only thing is, it's really dark. You know what? We need to uh, revert flight to the vehicle assembly. And we need to go back, right? I'm going to just bring the bring the sun up a little. That's my plan. <laughs> That's not beer. I know, as I said, I got up at like 6 a.m. To, to answer all sorts of questions and things like that. So we're just going to run time forwards a little. Let that sun get higher. So now we can see the surface. Ah, that looks a whole lot better. The early morning sun in realism overhaul is durable. This is actually just straight up tea. It's not even tea beer, which I have. How many mods do I have installed? A ton. But this is actually... KSP 1.1.3 What am I still doing up? I'm like, you know, don't you know that I have to be up here for you? Yes, 6 a.m. for you guys. Actually, technically it was a little before that because, you know, sometimes I gotta do, the, you know, some snuggling with the wife and things like that. But yeah, 6 a.m. I had to be up so I could get out and get home. Uh, they still have to clear the background checks and things like that. And hilariously enough, due to, um... They had were upgrading their system to use iPads, but unfortunately, whoever had installed all their stuff was not had not supplied. They were basically plugging them into these crappy IBM docking adapters for the laptops, which were standard USB 2.0 ports, which barely provide enough power to charge these things. So they were like wondering why the the things weren't working so well. So I um. I ended up having to debug this thing. I was like, so yeah, I actually know a little about your problems here. Maybe I can help you. <laughs> uh, it was obviously 
uh, obviously I didn't do too much. I mean, I, it would have been a serious security risk if I had actually touched anything, but I was just like, yeah, I think this is what you need to do, and we, we got it working anyway. But it was kind of funny to be there, like, and fix this. I I just could tell just by looking at the iPad what was going on. Let's see if this thing has enough thrust to go anywhere. You know what? I should also just turn off Bandicam. There's no reason to keep Bandicam around right now. There we go. That looks pretty good. Do you think this thing is going to be aerodynamically stable? I highly doubt it. Oh. Probably should have let the engine spool up first. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. You know what? We don't have enough air avionics here. I forgot. Oh, yeah, Moochie Decay. Ah, I actually have a second gen iPad as well, and all I do is I put uh, comics on it now. You're right, though. I, I'm. Uh, I need to upgrade that one as well. Mm -hmm. I realize I need to pull this this thing off. Okay. Oh, crap. This is a big problem. We need to put an extra control thing in here. So this isn't quite the correct thing just yet because its mass is... Well, actually, it's really, really interesting. The number of engines on this first stage is the same number, but it's not generating enough thrust to lift it, so... And it's only about half the thrust, whereas in the final stage... Hmm. Hmm. Gotta think that thing over. Okay, there we go. Saturn V. This... Oh, come on. Come on. I'm gonna make four of those. There we go. So now I'm gonna have to adjust the the thing again. Uh, okay, so the base is nine, the top... Oh, wait a second, is that my problem? Uh, oh, that's odd. Max size nine, cylinder start, cylinder end, no. I see. That moves that up, but how do I make it? How do I make it come in a little? I I don't like that ridge there. Cylinder end. There we go. Cylinder, cylinder, cylinder. cylinder. Let's bring the top in. Yeah, it doesn't work. Extra radius should be nothing. No, 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 no. Ah, never mind. Who cares? As long as this thing doesn't fall apart, of course it's going to fall apart. Okay, here we go. Moving the launch struts up here. And the whole thing down. Look at that! That is that is truly awesome, right? I like, I like Von Braun's designs. I mean, they were designed to look awesome to Disney. Like, because that's what he was selling them to. Yeah. Well, you know, like, computers are just always one of these hard things. Here's the thing, right? People are like, oh, hope my desktop remains relevant. At this point now, really, the per-core performance is kind of plateaued. So, you know, you can get some advantage out of better GPUs and everything, but there's only so far you can go with that. Okay, here we go. Throttle to 100%, stability control. Oh yeah, throttling up the engines. Should probably fire this up. Uh, fire! Yes, we're actually moving up orbit info. I need the orbit info up here. Look at this thing move! Oh! Oh, it's so beautiful! It's so beautiful. It is a continuation, but we've now actually done it realistic scaled. So, this is... 
this is done with realism overhaul we actually have real fuels although I don't have the correct fuel mixture right now so it's not hydrazine and nitric acid however this top stage does have high test peroxide in there, so we've got some of this stuff so I think I want to get up to at least 100 meters per second before I start to turn this thing let's just do that oh look at that you glorious creature you yeah the yellow clock is really slow sorry about that it's so we'll have to like, scale this thing up she flies so <laughs> I mean this is this is small fry compared to like the the insane moon rocket that I use for my world record attempt which has now been ratified as a world record by the way for reals I need to do a, a, a race between this and Elon Musk I think Elon Musk's ship will probably do fine because uh, it has several years of development on this thing so now I'm just trying to turn this thing over here's the question Will I get high enough and fast enough that I don't need wings on this stage, right? Oh, man. Come on. Just move this thing over. I'm just turning it, trying to keep it pointed in roughly the right, right direction. The good news is that as I'm rising up, of course, air pressure is dropping and the uh, specific impulse of these things are rising. This atmosphere delta V is actually going up on these upper stages, so my total delta V remaining is going up. Oh, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. I think it cannot take much more. I think it's doing just fine. What's my current status? Apoapsis is 30 kilometers. Time to apoapse is 52 seconds. I really need to be turning more. That's my problem. So I am making, I am making some mistakes here. Let's try and push that nose over. Notice how I'm deliberately turning it side on. The reason is, if these things do catch, they will be more, they'll be more likely to force it off axis. So I think we can get away with this. I did not, I did, I called it VB Ferry. As in very Brian Ferry. It's going to Avalon. Avalon. Yeah, you know, Roxy Music, awesome band. People forget about how good they were. Brian Ferry, he could wear a suit like a pro. He couldn't cut his hair. His hairstyle was always like, eh, couldn't even bother, bother shaving properly. But man, yeah, he looked good in a suit. I mean, in a kind of, obviously I'm saying this as someone that appreciates, you know, well-dressed. This is definitely, okay, I need to have started turning sooner. Uh, yeah, I think I might go back and restart this launch cycle because this is not going sideways fast enough. Surface speed, oh, I actually said surface speed is, uh, horizontal speed is 745. Yeah, we're not going to do this. Revert flight, revert to vehicle assembly. When is the roll going to happen? Will there be atmosphere differential? There's no roll going to happen. <laughs> Brian Eno is your favorite Brian member of Roxy Music. And honestly, I cannot fault you on that because Brian Eno was indeed a great Brian. Uh, there's many great Brians in Great Britain. I mean, there's obviously Brian May. You know, he's one of my favorites. One of my most favorite song is Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Not because I think it's the one that I want to listen to always, but it's definitely one of the most interesting and accomplished pieces of music ever it just has so much in it and it has so much cultural significance i i love that tune immensely i cannot put into words how great that piece of music is however if i just want to have oh yeah brian blessed <laughs> die <laughs> yeah of, of course he was uh, in flash garden which is another fantastic example of a queen uh, soundtrack like he is unmatched in terms of his brightness I'm gonna just say that <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh oh. Turned a little too hard there. Hold, 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 hold. Come on. Look at this thing. <laughs> a dull bolt of lightning, very, very frightening thing. Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro. Magnifico, oh, oh, oh. I mean, it's awesome because Brian May, not only is he this awesome guitarist that has written, you know, some great tunes with Queen, and he's done a bunch of solo stuff, and you know, he, did you know that he actually what, did the soundtrack to the original Mad Max? Yeah, bet you didn't know that. But he's also an astronomer. Uh, he uh, obviously quit his PhD to go on the road with Queen, but he went back. Yeah, I, I so I'm really hoping that at some point I can have him as a guest on Asteroid thing, because uh, you know we're both big fans, and we've had him signing the T-shirts, right? You know the Asteroid update. The competitions have all been to win shirts signed by Brian May. Which is pretty cool, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, so I think actually we can probably. Wait a second. 1.6. We need to get this a little higher. Okay, now we're going to go to the correct attitude here. We're going through Mach 1. I'm just going to hold this. Uh, I'm I'm working on the whole American citizen thing, although it's not the country that I necessarily thought it was going to be next year, but um, I think that all the same, I mean, I'm going to do fine. <sighs> but I will obviously continue to do my best to make, well, to maintain America's greatness, because as far as I'm concerned, America is a pretty darn great country, despite many flaws. Um, and I will point out that under the Obama uh, administration, we have had the greatest expansion in breweries in the world's history ever, right? If you're a beer fan, then you have to look upon the Obama presidency as the greatest thing to happen in the history of the world. That's basically it. Ah. <sighs> Not being political at all. I'm just saying how great America is. Did I end up adding 12 steering rockets? No, they're all steering because I just can't do that. Is am I in the U.S. now? I'm always I've always been in the U.S. since doing this, uh, starting this Kerbal thing. Like, uh, yes. The, oh yes, there's also the, that total solar eclipse thing. That one thing which uh. You know, it doesn't matter what way the election went, it was always going to be awesome. Well, <laughs> GDP has been pretty darn excellent as well. Uh, okay, let's let's uh, continue this roll over. 40 kilometers. Look at it go there! Oh, this is truly a thing of beauty! A beautiful... The only thing I had to do, incidentally, with this was real fuels. I really dislike the fact that real fuels, you can't disable limited ignition on a per-engine basis from inside the game. It's really frustrating because in real life, if you had a rocket that needed, like, the RS-25 to refire, so the RS-25 in real fuels has one ignition, which is wrong. Because the RS-25 is actually capable of relighting itself multiple times. But, yeah, the developers of, of uh, Real Fuels were like, no, we want to make it, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the theme song for this launch is I Want to Break Free, which is a fantastic video. Um, but for some reason that video was not shown as much in the US as it should have been. There we go. We're getting up to two kilometers per second. Now here's the question. Will this thing continue to fly straight when the engines burn out? Are we ready? Steady. I might have to adjust my staging. Oh yes! Yes! Look at it go! 
Oh, that is so beautiful! Oh, it was. They were all in drag. Every single one of them were in drag. We're just headed with this thing to orbit. I think that's really all I wanted to do was do the real scale solar system version of the uh, this rocket. Okay, so now. No, I need to nose down a lot because we now need to pick up lateral speed. Oh, we need to focus on getting lateral speed. Actually, Von Braun's original design was going to put the uh, spacecraft into a 1,000 kilometer orbit, and of course, interestingly enough, it was Von Braun and Van Allen that noticed, or his Van Allen. They basically launched the Explorer 1 satellite that found the Van Allen Bill. So, Von Braun figured out that particular problem. This is not the first shot success because, of course, I've had... I've took this thing and had to rebuild it. I just wanted to make sure that we were... <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we were fine. Did I add vectoring to the engines? I used a different engine. These are not the same kind of engines that uh, Von Braun would have had. They're using a different fuel mixture, and they think they have higher specific impulse. Oh, actually, specific impulse is 281. Yeah, I think I could totally do a, an, a me and Amy video in RSS. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, vapor and feed lines. Uh, RH. Why is this thing rolling? So I've had a problem with uh, the propellant being unstable, but we will fix that. Okay, orbital speed is 6.5 kilometers per second. Come on, very stable, and... I'm just wondering, actually, four minutes to apoapse. We should actually straighten this thing out. Because I'm going to need a second burn. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'll just do this. Light up those engines! Yes! Look at it go! Ha! Beautiful! Oh, wow! Wow, this is looking so pretty! This is looking so good. Okay, here we go. And we're going to let it get up to about 800. That's what we're going to do. And then we'll, we'll shut the engines down. I'm looking at the Apple apps down in the corner here. When that gets up to about 800, that's when I'll shut these engines down. Bingo! There we go. Look at these things! Glow! Ooh. Yeah, we still have to worry about the eulage uh, with this thing. I'm not sure if Von Braun thought about it, but in this case we do. Why has the game got faster now? Because we ditched all that excess mass. So we have 23 minutes to periaps, and then we need to perform a circularization burn. We have a thrust to mass ratio of 6.1. I'm not sure what Von Braun did decided to do with his engines, but I think I might have the mass ratios for my space is, uh, my stage is incorrect. Look at that. We're gonna fly over Africa there. Five, four, three. Okay, now we're gonna fix this thing. Werner didn't think about many things he didn't know about. Okay, so that's me beginning a turn. Once we get this thing flat, we're gonna, of course, perform the. I honestly, right now, we're just gonna prove that we can orbit and land, and future episodes will be continuing the notion of the Von Braun Mars mission because we kind of built part of it last week. Of course, last week's build video was completely ruined by, um, well, a daughter. <laughs> as much as I love her and as much as we thought where she was funny, uh, we need to redo a lot of this thing. Will it make it to the moon? Not with this Delta V. It only has 1.2 kilometers per second of Delta V left, but it definitely has enough. To... I don't think I can land this back at Kennedy Space Center. I'm going to aim to land back in the US. How about that? Okay, so now... 
I'm gonna move this here. Pin this. Pin. Pin. Damn it. Pin. There we go. Throw. Make this thing fire forwards. We've got two minutes to apple apps. Okay, now we get stable. Throttle up. Up those engines. Oh crap! 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 Okay, we got ourselves into an orbit, but something... My controls went a little nutty there. Okay. Point in the correct direction. That is a big problem. <laughs> I did hear about the issues of people coming back from the ISS with nearsighted... Uh, from gravity... It's not from gravity affecting the eyes. It's actually to do with spinal fluid, which will like migrate along all the different nerve stems and it's been it's kind of pushing itself up to the top of the neck and then pushing itself forward through the optic nerve into the eyes okay uh, just gotta stop this rotation still I've got three minutes now to do this <laughs> I didn't save why would I need to save Save! Oh, savings for amateurs that crash. Oh, man. Come on, stop this rotation. <laughs> yeah, one day on Mars was 24 hours and 40 minutes. That's something I actually want to do. I want to build a clock that has all the different planet daytimes. Which would be kind of cool. Here we go. It seems like I could use a few more RCS thrusters. You are absolutely right about that. I think the RCS thrusters, I've, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save once I get in orbit. To be honest, I mean, I am in orbit. <laughs> you know what? I think what I'm gonna do actually is shut down all these engines. This is the hard part. Come on. Shut down engine. Shut down the engine. I'm just basically shutting down all but the middle engine because we're going to have too much thrust. Oh, actually, I'm rotating the wrong way now. Man, how much, how much peroxide am I using? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. Would I consider if I didn't have a family? Would I consider being the first person on Mars? Yes, but but I would probably be not that person. You could try living by Jupiter time. It just means you have like a couple of days every day. Okay, we still have two minutes to Apple app, so we're doing just fine here. We just need to control the rotation a bit. Ah. Correcting this rotation in multiple axes is really hard. You know what? I gotta turn this thing off. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Look, I've got it rotating in the plane of the orbit. But not quite. Oh. You know what would be nice, actually? Is, I don't think there's any display. Is there any display that actually shows me my rotation residuals? My rotation rate so I can like just look at them numerically rather than try to estimate it from the values, from the rotation of the nav ball. There we go. I'm not going to time warp. That would be cheating. You guys would be like, oh yeah, you know, if you didn't use time warp, you would totally be stuck in space. 
you're watching without sound. Who's watching without sound? <laughs> okay. Almost getting there. So does anyone else have any interesting questions? No, I would never put myself as a as a texture. I'm sorry, that is a scary, scary prospect. I'm going to say that. <laughs> I've seen the texture replacer mod for me, and that is horrific, I've got to say. <laughs> you only do that if you're trying to make, like, a horror movie, right? The, the one mod that I did want to do at one point was... Uh, I mean, I did want to do an XCOM 2 mod where I basically put in my own voice lines and everything, but I actually ended up not doing it because I kind of ran out of time. So, yeah. Also, you know, not having any... What? I just start... So, Forfa is saying, I just dated a Scotswoman. What should I do? You should make the joke Forfa 2... You should make the joke about the Scottish football scores where you could get 4-4-4 four, 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 East 5-5, five, five, right? Or <laughs> it's, it's hard, no. Uh, here we go. Very stable as well. Let's make this happen. And stable. And throttle up. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Oh, that's circular enough for me. Have I ever seen a night landing on a shuttle? I've only ever seen videos of the shuttle landing. I am unfortunately was cursed with not really being in the right place ever to see a shuttle, except you know from space, from like orbiting in space. Never saw a shuttle launch, which is. You know, unfortunate. Where are we? I guess that's Australia by now? Or is that Africa? No, that's Africa. That's totally Africa still. Look at it, how beautiful this is. The cradle of humanity. Mm. What am I doing? I'm flying the Von Braun space mission. Now that I've got it, I'm going to fly it. So, let's actually put this thing in space and let's actually wa watch our oxygen levels and everything. Look at that. Now here's the thing. We've launched from Florida. I'm going to have to wait until there's something, someplace interesting to land. Oh, I missed out on a lot of these things, but you know what? I was that dad that took my kids on a road trip to see a, a rocket launch from Vandenberg. And that, I have to say, was pretty cool. Even though, you know, the, even though I had to get the kids up at like 5 a.m. Okay, I'm going to go for a daytime landing, so that does mean... Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to land in Africa. I'm just going to do that, right? The reason being that I haven't picked the correct orbital attitude. If I do that, then I'll be spending a lot of my re-entry at night, which will just be no fun. I want to have whatever piece of land goes through here. So it'll probably be North Africa. We'll just imagine that we're landing at the emergency abort site that they had in Africa. There was at least one abort mode where the shuttle was unable to get to orbit but it had enough energy to cross the Atlantic and there was a, a a strip, a landing area designated in Africa which they could redirect to in that case. It was apparently it was a very small time window where that would could actually be possible. But it'd be a cool thing to actually try. Now, I'm not going to New Zealand. There look we're now That's looking pretty good. Okay. So Next time around, we're going to begin our deorbit burn. So we just want to slow this thing down. Oh, not that much. Here's going to be the hard part, is knowing... Knowing just how much is safe. 26 kilometers. I think that if I do that, I will burn up... 
151, I will just skip off the atmosphere. 108. 52. I think that's that's a good bet. I'm going to F5 that. We're going to land in North Africa somewhere. No. Point it at the maneuver node. <sighs> yes. Transatlantic abort mode. Yeah, you know, I, I really mean to go into Orbiter. I'd love to do a series where I just fly all these abort modes in Orbiter. I don't know how likely it would be to make it successful because I I hear that it's actually very, very hard to do. But, you know, I think it would be kind of cool to have, to try. I would totally F5 that, know what I mean. That is an interesting phrase. An interesting turn of phrase. Oh, crap, yes. So the people saying, oh, you should just use Time Warp. I have Persistent Rotation installed because, you know, I'm a proper player. Okay, this thing is now having a hard time going to the correct orientation. <sighs> have I tried to make a space elevator? I know better than trying to make a space elevator in Kerbal Space Program because physics range is, you know, two and a half kilometers thereabouts. Uh, have I DJed publicly recently? No, I have, the last time I DJed was probably a couple of years ago. I mean, I'll, I'll turn up at friends' houses that they have records going. And I'll have a bag of records in the car because I quite enjoy doing that, but generally, no. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure Orbiter could do the mode where everybody has to ditch, with the ditch mode, right? That's what that is. I mean, I think in any of the, many of the abort modes, the safer option was having the crew jump out. You know, that was the, the option. And it wasn't really flying in a straight and level line, Whiskey. It was more flying in a descent. Like, it would be actually descending, and of course, if you you know, fun fact about the space shuttle, that its terminal velocity when descending in a stable glide slope is faster than the terminal velocity of the human body. So technically, the astronauts would jump out and they would fly upwards as they fell towards the ground relative to the target, yeah? <laughs> okay. This is going to be a while. You know what I've realized is that if I am to get to the other, get this thing lined up, nine minutes to Apple apps, time to Perry apps, I have 58 minutes. And the problem is with persistent rotation, it will never shut down the residuals completely. Yeah, the PID is, is so mediocre. The PID is... Yeah, it's, you, know, you notice that the letter D and S are next to each other on the keyboard. So maybe that's what it is. I will ha I already have grey hair because I am an old person. I am an old individual, a cranky individual that has very little in common with the youth of today. The youth of today are... You know, obviously a bunch of layabouts, right? No, I don't know. No, I, <laughs> uh, the youth of today are perhaps impassive, you know, in, you know, what's the usual words? They are impulsive and perhaps, you know, think things are good ideas and make bad decisions. Uh, wasn't there a possible situation? You know what? There was a the the launch abort. There was a launch abort system where they could absolutely destroy the entire shuttle stack with the crew on board if it was going to be heading in the wrong direction. That was live with every single launch, right? So uh, Shujin Tribble's asking if I can zero out the motion so I don't need R. CS. The problem is that RCS is the only thing I have. I think what you are asking is, can I zero out the motion without using SAS, maybe? I'm just trying to see if there's... It'd be nice if there was any... Uh, maybe I should use Smart ASS to just 
hold it. Maybe that might be a little better. Let's try holding um, Maneuver Node. See if this thing is slightly better pilot. Does anyone remember whether Mech Jeb uses the same tuned SAS or is it something else? Yeah, they did detonate Challenger's solid rocket boosters. But uh, that was, you know, by that point the shuttle was long gone. Right, the shuttle had broken up aerodynamically. A lot of people think, by the way, the Challenger actually exploded. It didn't. What happened was there was an air... It basically started to twist and the whole thing broke up aerodynamically. And because there was fuel and whatever, there was some fire, but it was more the fact that it was simply breaking up due to uh, aerodynamic stresses. And at, honestly, at that velocity, at max Q, there wasn't much difference because everything just disintegrated one way or another. But, you know, it's... Um, there we go. I think, I think that is doing a much better job of damping my residuals. But it'd be nice to have, like, something that would show these numbers. Okay, I think I'm just going to let this run. Yeah, we're sort of going around... 49 minutes, 45, 44, 43, 42. Oh, no, 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 the, no, the, so someone's saying, never mind, TK0423, uh, no, they, they would have, yeah, no, they would have been splat, no. Never mind. So we're now getting onto the far side of the earth, getting ready to make our Burn. Commander Cyanide. Yeah, never mind. <sighs> There's a whole lot of discussion about this. You can go and read a lot of these reports in great and gory detail. Just going to run the time forward a little. Oh, there's plenty of documentaries that look at it in in great detail. I keep getting sent terrible documentaries, but there's quite there's a few good ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our propellant is unstable. We're getting about one minute, and then I can start this burn. Wow! It says fifteen seconds. Here's the thing: fifteen seconds. I'm going to do it on a single engine because otherwise, like, if, if I did it on five engines, it would be three seconds. And the spool up and shut down time would adjust my uh, apoaps or periaps quite significantly. Okay, one minute to go. And we're still unstable. So I'm going to let it get down to like 30 seconds. And then I'm going to start thrusting forward so we get the propellant becoming stable. Let's turn on the lights. There's no lights anywhere that work. Very risky. Risky. Stable. Very stable. Okay. We are stable. Eulage. Fuel has settled. Thruster. Firing. And i got to watch this thing. It's going to hit zero. I thought... Engine hasn't fired. Why hasn't the engine fired? Um, it looks like there's fuel in it. Shut down engine. Uh, wait a second. Activate engine. Yes, okay. Maybe that engine wasn't stable. Throttle and fire. Oh, there we go. Okay. We had some problem with that center engine. We have traveled several... We've traveled like 100 kilometers in the time that it took us to figure it out. But we're ready to continue that burn. And... Oh! Five meters per second. Okay. So periaps is 54 meters... Uh, kilometers, which is probably fine. Now, uh, we want to change our ASAS to go prograde. Let the whole thing turn around. <laughs> yep. 
Oh, Maker... Yeah, okay. Maker of Roads and Cthulhu, here's the thing. You just have to ask, what do you respect more, the Constitution or the symbol? And I think the Constitution is the the way place to go. That is That is the ultimate law of the land. What is SAAS? It is uh, Stability Assist System. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. I've got a force roll on this. Let's do that. Zero degrees. Maybe I can get it to roll to the correct orientation. You know what? That's that's the whole consequences of free speech are people being mad at your use of free speech. And if you are going to be a true citizen, you have to embrace the consequences of your actions. And uh, yeah, that's really what happens. You need to you need to hold people accountable always. And you also need to be uh, honest to yourself and you know, you know, it's Yeah. There's there's a whole lot of rubbish being talked about that is not I'm I'm <laughs> uh <sighs> Okay Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, you know, the the US Constitution is actually a very, very specific document that covers a whole lot of... It, it's actually, I mean, like, the whole Bill of Rights section at the front basically makes a whole lot of stuff you're right that is not... Uh, is, uh, is not covered by any, you know, in many other countries. What is the future of space fuels? Well, um, I would say the future of space fuels is, is I don't know. <laughs> Basically, most of the rocket fuel research has been done. But the real, yeah, the fuel of the future, right, is me- methyl ox. Methane, liquid methane, and liquid oxygen. That is what... Raptor is going to use, and that's what Blue Origin are suggesting that they will use in their engine. So yeah, you know, that's totally that's totally what's going to happen. Okay, how, how are we doing? I just want to see. Now we got a ways to go before we start hitting the hitting the low altitudes here. Yeah, metallic hydrogen, that ain't happening anytime soon. How does the RCS work in real life? In real life, there's little rocket engines which are pressure-fed, and in this case, there would be a catalyst which is decomposing the high test peroxide into oxygen and um, water or steam. But generally, you would use a bipropellant, and that would be something like unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen or dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, so now I'm going to run time forward. Time to periaps is 41 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact catalyst that is used for hydrazine versus other ones. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I would love to comment on the chat, but I know that people don't necessarily like having the uh, a whole lot of stuff, you know, politics come into the stream. I think that you know, as I said, let's can we not celebrate what you know brings, what makes us awesome, what we agree on, what do we agree on? We agree that rockets are fantastic. 
I should and triple. I have not seen any NASA challenges. So yeah, uh, I I have heard about the diamond batteries. So the diamond batteries is a story that what happens is in Britain the nuclear reactors are moderated with carbon instead of water. Most of the world uses water to moderate their reactors. Britain and a few other countries said, no, we're going to use carbon, right? Graphite. And there's many advantages to do that. They use graphite and then they would cool it with uh, carbon dioxide. So, over time, uh, nitrogen in the system would absorb neutron radiation and you would end up getting carbon-14. So the carbon-14 would then be incorporated. They've come up with a way to basically take the carbon-14 you know, extract that out and make diamonds out of it. And those diamonds are beta emitters, I believe. And that means that if they're emitting high energy electrons, you can use that to power, uh, you know, make batteries, power sources, really tiny ones. So that's a really cool idea, and it's a pretty high energy density source if you can make it work. Of course, uh, making it work is the hard part. <laughs> Oh, listen, British reactors have had a much better safety record than some uh, many water-cooled reactors. I mean, let's face it, here's the, th here's the thing. Why cool a reactor with something that when it gets too hot turns into an explosive? How about that, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I actually was at a one summer job. I was working in a nuclear power station. Do we have engines on the lights? On there, that's it. Thank you. Now we can at least see what this spacecraft is doing. I'm looking forward to thorium reactors. You might be looking forward for a long time. Let me tell you, that thorium reactors, a lot of nice things have been said about them, but they don't necessarily do everything that has been said. Right? There's, there are many problems with thorium reactors that are glossed over by proponents. <laughs> Patrick42H has the correct answer. It says, it's not that water-cooled reactors are a bad idea. It's just that sometimes they convert themselves into air-cooled reactors. <laughs> uh... I was I was actually working in the health physics department. I was working on their radiation detector system and, you know, basically putting together spreadsheets and protocols for testing them. And I remember that they had all, they basically were like, "Okay, so we got a radiation source. Here it is. Here's the specs. We need to use this to test it." And I looked at it and I it took me a while to do the math, but eventually I figured out that they'd ordered something that was like a hundred times more powerful than they were supposed to have. Okay. There, look at this, the sun is rising. Oh, this is looking so pretty. 25 minutes. But we're running at five times normal speed here. Or sorry, four times normal speed here. So we're just gonna, you know, let this go... I'm just running this at physical time warp. That's what's going on. Yeah, the the skybox is great. There's the LMC, I think. You can see the whole Milky Way. This is realism overhaul. If you want realism overhaul, you're pretty much still stuck, in, uh, stuck using the older version of Kerbal Space Program. Traveling wave reactors. I do not honestly know enough about... I mean, I know how they work, but I've... The only thing I've really read are a couple of articles, so I don't honestly know if if they're a good idea. Now, the airborne reactor, oh, man, that wasn't an experiment. That was just like an accident waiting to happen. The funny thing I remember about the airborne reactor that they had was that not only did they have this reactor in the plane, but they had to... They had to have a second plane following it around with a hazmat team ready to go. Like, if it crashed, they had to be there to parachute onto the scene to safe up the reactor and everything. <laughs> uh, oh, this is looking cool. Look at that. 
I'm going to hit F5. Notice that? Yeah, we go. Quick save. Quick save. We're totally doing this. Now, the only thing is, I don't know about the thermal tolerance of any of these parts. We might have to just enable cheats because I... I obviously designed this to look cool rather than anything else. Oh, looks like we might actually be coming in a little shallow here. This is us flying over the Caribbean. There's Florida there. That's Florida right there. But we're going to pass over it. And then, yeah. So, basically, nuclear-powered cars probably won't happen. And the reason is that for any fission or fusion reaction, you are going to be getting a lot of neutrons coming off. Now, I will say that yes, with helium-3 fusion, you can, you would get a, it would be called a neutronic fusion. Now, the reason is that if you fuse, hu, uh, fuse helium-3 with, I believe, deuterium, you end up getting protons given off instead. So, uh, you release energy, but um, it's, you know, a whole lot safer. Okay, uh, 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 okay, now, what is it, normal, so, oh, you got to do this in surface mode now, right? Surface, target, angle of attack, I forget how to do this. Ah, yes, heading, pitch, roll, or pitch, uh, zero. Heading, oh, no, 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 no. Let's make the heading slightly lower. There we go, there we go. Now, I'm going to keep the pitch high here because we're going to begin our descent. So I'm just going to fly this using the um, smart ASS, right? So we're going to maintain this attitude and hope that we flatten out our descent a little. Now that we're actually hitting the atmosphere, yeah, F5 again. Okay. Might just adjust that a little. So what I'm doing is I'm using this to fly it while, so I can just ma basically pay attention to you guys. So anyway, neutrons, neutrons are really hard to block, right? Neutrons just go through everything. And it's not just that they go through everything, it's that they'll go through things and they'll bounce around and they'll kind of keep going. So, yes, they go through you, they damage your DNA, and then they come out the other side. You need, like, four inches of shielding to cut down the neutron flux by half. So if you have a car, the amount of radiation shielding you need is probably bigger than most cars. You just don't want that many neutrons coming off. So I don't think you will ever see nuclear-powered weapons like personal weapons or nuclear-powered personal vehicles. That's really what we're talking about. You know, when you see the phasers in Star Trek, you got to ask, wh what is the power source for these phasers? Because they uh, are able to vaporize a person in some scenes, which just requires a phenomenal amount of energy. And yet they're able to do it. Fusion also releases tons of neutrons. Not tons, I mean it releases huge neutron fluxes enough to kill you. So, yeah. Now, I guess if you were going to do a Star Trek phaser, you might have antimatter. Antimatter, most of the energy comes out in gamma rays, which are still penetrating but they do a lot less damage to you. And of course, in Star Trek, they have this whole thing about the anti dilithium crystals being like some sort of energy guide and you make the reaction happen inside the crystal and it it's just made up wavy crystal stuff. It's like energy crystals. Okay. I'm just adjusting my uh, rotation here. Maintaining a 10 degree angle of attack. And still going. What about magnetic shielding? Oh, yes. Neutrons. No charge. Thank you. I'm hoping that we'll make it over Africa before burning up. Yeah, crystals fix everything. 
Every now and then, my kids want to go into these, like, um, you know, crystal stores. They they sell all these, like, minerals and things like this, and they all have these nice descriptions, like, this crystal aids, you know, your concentration or centers your spirit and all that. And I'm like, that's a piece, that's a bismuth crystal. Don't eat that. You could get poisoning. You know, like, <laughs> that, that's just quartz. It's a little pinker than usual. Do I care about World War II? Yeah, I think World War II is an interesting thing, but I haven't played Hearts of Iron because I simply don't have the time. If I was going to play a Paradox game, I would probably play more Crusader Kings because I love that game more than anything else. Crusader Kings is easily my favourite strategy game. I just... There's so many hilarious stories that have come out of this this is starting to look kind of scary the way this is heating up i gotta say uh yeah i was i was watching some uh i was just clicking around youtube and there was some guy like posting videos of uh a certain fruity cell phone being having the world's strongest acid poured over and i was i watched this guy and i just realized this this guy knows nothing about what he's doing he is going to kill himself with some sort of chemical poisoning like it looked he had gloves on but it didn't sound like he had any you know breathing apparatus or anything to hand uh i just see some of these channels and i know that people are going to die because they're going to do something really stupid in the name of getting YouTube hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh. That is my RCS thrusters. Okay. Well, I uh, guess those aren't going to be helping me hold attitude for much longer. You would think the RCS thrusters are <laughs> probably... We'd probably be better at doing these things, but yeah. Hopefully my... Oh, look at these things. They're just wobbling around like crazy flappy things. <laughs> We're down to 80 kilometers and we are not shedding much. We are actually shedding speed now. That's a good sign. I just want to get over here and I want to, you know cut the amount of heat. I wonder if maybe I should increase my angle of attack so I start bleeding off more speed. Let's try hitting 20 degrees, right? I'm going to fly it this way. Did you attach an antenna at the front to disperse heat? No, is that normally what you're supposed to do? Okay, I'm going to bring this thing back down. No, 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 okay. That is not what we want to have happen here, okay. Everything's overheating. We're tumbling out of control. We have one of those moments. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. No, we've not okay. <laughs> These engines are really starting to heat up here. Like, here's the thing. All this spinning is probably really good for bleeding off speed, right? Yeah, I'm going to throw some crystals. I'm going to align my trajectory by using by meditating on my crystals <laughs> oh man this this place that my kids occasionally they see it, it's like we're walking around the lake and can we go in there and look at the pretty crystals and like hell yeah and actually orion it keeps on going in and he's like he finds this skull vase or vial or whatever and he's like i want this and i want to put gold in it or poison or something it's like isn't it kind of obvious that you would have poison if it was like a skull shaped thing oh man <laughs> oh wow 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 it's not catching fire yet I don't think I, I'm still holding out hope that he will manage to make it through this as long as he can 
keep the nose up, they can bleed off speed. And I can definitely get this thing back under control. It's just a question of whether I can get through the atmosphere without burning up. That's the real danger here. Man, you know what I could do, actually, uh, if I could get it. Uh, control. Roll. Give me more roll authority. Yes, give me all the roll authority. Almost. <laughs> oh, dear, what happened? Ah, uh, something's exploding. Something else is exploding. And yes. We're not going to get very far in this. <laughs> you know what I could do, actually, is... Uh, Isabel Nick and Thrall to 100%. Let's see if we get some engines. Yes! Fire those engines! Slow us down! What is... Okay, we actually have an engine thrust here, right? Okay. I might still be able to land this thing. We have a thrust to weight ratio of 2.5. Oh no, we're about to start exploding. There, engine's going. Uh, engine's going. And my last engine. Gone. Oh, and now the crew cabin has separated. Reaching crew G limit! No! Jebediah Kerman died of G-forces. They are both Sadly, killed in action. That was pretty cool though, wasn't it? Oh man! Okay, now time to F9 it. <laughs> it still had engines, I was hoping I could reverse it and because the engines were heavy that I could actually do a land vertical landing on it. So I'm just gonna turn off heating because I don't know, like I didn't have time to actually make this thing safe and I'm sure there's ways to do it but we are gonna rely on this okay so once again also definitely gonna look at increasing the role authority here because I think that is part of the problem I'm gonna run like f a few times faster than regular speed here just to make sure that we get here and also gonna inc oh yeah, let's not go that high. Let's, yeah, actually, let's bring this down to 15 degrees. 15 degrees angle of attack here. I think that is doable. I mean, I might, might be able to do it if I adjust my orbit and pick the right one. Maybe my problem was that I had picked too high an angle of attack and basically lost it. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, the way that things just started falling apart and then they died because of G-forces. G because that's really, uh, you know, what would probably happen. Okay, here we go. 85 kilometers. Now we get some heating, but we should ignore the heating in this case. Like, how am I supposed to make RCS things more power, more, like, heat tolerant? There's no way for me to mess with that. Oh look, we've got this happening. Let's... I'm gonna give more roll authority here. Get... Here's more roll. Oh, man, it's doing this again! Okay. You know what? Let's, let's reduce the angle of attack to something manageable. Like zero. Oh, we're in a flat spin. We're not in a flat spin. We are... What is the name of this kind of spin, right? Where the angle of attack is above the stall level. And there's no way for me to get it back down to the stall. It might have survived if I hadn't used the... Actually, no, the engines that were not used, they exploded first. Whereas the engine in the middle, it exploded last. So... Oh, there we go. Look, it's kind of getting some control back here. Periapsis is dropping, so I guess we're on our way home. 
And we should be able to glide this thing at this point. Oh, just need to make it point in the right direction. Okay, you know what? We are going to do... I'm going to tell it to point along its velocity vector. That's what I'm telling it. This is definitely not flying safe by any means. Oh, watch it. Feeling like 2Gs here. I think that once this goes subsonic, actually, it becomes much more flyable. I mean, here's the thing. Von Braun hadn't wasn't really a plane designer. So, and, and to be honest, when he designed this, there still wasn't a great deal known about how aircraft handled supersonic speeds. So, you know, he kind of just had these big wide wings that were similar to the kind of wings he'd seen on aircraft, I guess. Oh, thank you. M5150. This is called a brown stall. Is that because what it's what happens to your underwear when you this happens to you? No. <laughs> Uh, more space poop. Whoa, look at this thing. Uh, okay. Why is it, I'm using the smart ASS. Someone's asking why I'm not using SAS. I'm using the smart ASS, which is probably <laughs> a little better. Um... But man, I am I yeah, this is starting to look like a flat spin. I just hope that I lose Oh man, look, we're we're gonna end up ditching in the ocean unless I can get it pointing in the right direction. Activate port and starboard engines to manage the roll. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, because I need to keep that fuel. Also you know, you want to try doing this. Look, we can try to go to locked camera, right? I can go activate engine. And activate engine. The problem is uh, that we can't use the engines because the G-forces are pulling all the fuel forward. So the thing is unstable, basically. So we're not going to be able to light up those engines anyway. <laughs> I bet we don't do locked camera. What's wrong with locked camera? Oh, look, look, it's kind of almost there. Oh, hey, look, look, it's kind of there, kind of there. Okay, I'm going to tell it to just kill the rotation. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Here's the next problem, right? The next problem is that I'm now heading into the denser parts of the atmosphere at really high speeds. And so there's a pretty good chance that I will tear this aircraft apart. It just doesn't... Oh, man, you know what? Come on. Pull out of this dive. The control surface response time is too long. And that is actually forcing me... Okay. Okay! 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 Here we go! Now, I'm just gonna bring this up now. <sighs> yes! Woo! <laughs> now, here's the thing. Can we light up any of these engines? These engines are still very unstable. So you know what? I'm gonna start trying to push them forwards. I'm going to keep this nose up again. So what I'm going to do is grab this and put it on the side here. I am going to shut these engines back. Uh, oh, shut down engine. Shut down engine. Activate, activate, activate. Okay, so we only have one engine in the middle that's working. And we just need it to come stable at some point. Otherwise, we're not going to go very far. Otherwise, we're going to have to ditch in the water. See, because of our unstable mode of descent, we ended up uh, basically 
burning to oh I thought for a second we had a we had some thing there helping me okay now the next thing I should probably do okay or maybe I should think about okay I'm gonna actually start having this thing go nose down a little and we've got the roll authority back so let's bring this down let's reduce the pitch authority in these to see if that'll help Because I'm wondering... There, yeah, control deflection, that's what we're doing. No. So we're, we're basically wobbling up and down because the control surfaces are deflecting too fast, or too far, and it takes too long to get there. That's really what was the problem with that whole descent mode. I think that if I just touched it, it would have fall into a stable mode but I wasn't able to do it and I'm still burning these engines and getting nothing we are out in the middle of the Atlantic with no land in sight if we could get these engines running it would be great hmm I'm just trying to think, like, here's an idea. I could pull this into a vertical climb, and then as it stalls and starts to fall back, then we might get stable propellant. I'm going to do it. Ready? We're going to do this. Ready? Ve oh, very stable! Yes, engine firing! Yes, give me some more speed. We're going to get some speed and altitude here. I don't know how far we're going to get like this. But I'm going to burn, push myself higher. Okay. And then just going to follow this over again. So yeah, just by pulling up, that dropped the fuel to the bottom of the tank. That's what it is. How, what else am I doing? I still have tons of high test peroxide. So I'm wondering whether I should try flying high and just burn all my fuel or whether I should concentrate on flying subsonic. I think I think if I keep going subsonic, I will get better glide ratios because, you know, the drag will be lower. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to try and find, like, a stable glide slope. And the, here's the thing. It's just not going to... It's not going to work. Yes, that's right. Speed is life. Altitude is life insurance. That's what I've heard said by many a smart pilot. Yeah, the Portuguese have some islands nearby-ish. I'm wondering if I should actually try turning towards them. I, I mean, I'm definitely going to have a better chance of getting to those than I am getting to the mainland Africa. You know what, actually... If only, as if there was a way to actually put this thing in here. 45 degrees. I think I, I think they're about 60 degrees. Uh, maybe not even 60. Oh crap, did I deploy the gear by accident? Altitude is 12 kilometers. I have no idea how far I have to go. Several hundred miles. So let's actually do some math. Vertical speed is about 30 meters per second, right? I am, um, say, 10 kilometers up. So 30 meters per second over 10 kilometers, that's 3 seconds per 100 meters. That's uh, 300 seconds, 5 minutes. F uh, 300 seconds times 200 meters per second is uh, 60 kilometers. Yeah. 60 kilometers? 600 kilometers? I might be getting... Yeah, we're not getting there. But, all the same, I do have a little more life in this thing. If I can just get my vertical speed to stabilize. Here we go. Once again... Ah, 
Do you live on the islands? Uh, I, what do you mean? This is where I'm going to try and land on these islands. And I don't think I can get there. I don't think there's even the slightest chance of me getting there. All the same, I'll give it a go. Throttle up those engines. And pick up some speed. And there we go. So here, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to balance this out, right? If I get too slow and too low, then the thicker atmosphere is going to disrupt my ability to glide for long distances. I'm, I'm not going to bail out. I'm going to totally ditch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull a sully in the middle of the Atlantic. You don't think this can survive a water landing? You'd be surprised at how slow I can make this thing fly. It actually has pretty wide wings, and it's relatively lightweight. It also has these weird flashy things here. It's really a camouflage. It's like, it's called Active Dazzle cam Camouflage. Active Dazzle Camouflage. The latest thing in graphic glitches. Okay, here we go. Descending 20 meters per second. That will be a 500... 500 times 2, that's 100 kilometers. <laughs> I'm hoping that you like the stream, Mr. Pavel. Uh, Pavel, Pawes, whatever. Dazzle camouflage was great, but I honestly, it's hard to see how it would work unless you're, you know, unless you experience it. The African hare about to shoot you out of the sky. I doubt it. Okay, here we go. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of maintaining velocity, to be honest. Using these little HTP thrusters. Yes, that Silverlight Pony has it correctly. Active Dazzle Camouflage is also known as Z Fighting Shadows. Very stable. Okay, I'm going to fire this engine up. And we're going to go and gain some altitude. So that will buy us some more distance. Here's the thing, the energy, like the engines, I can't just run them at a low thrust. They're pretty much 100% or nothing. This is a recreation of Von Braun's ferry rocket at real solar system scale. Problem is it does suffer from thermal issues and uh, also has some stability issues during descent. Here we go. Yeah, pirates tend to be on the other coast where there's the... well. Where there's fewer stable states. There's a whole... You know, basically, the east coast of Africa has many more issues because it has a higher levels of terrorism, things like that. And that's also led to, you know, warlords and poverty and piracy. It's also near to the, um, to the oil out of the Gulf. That's what's going on there. Man, I'm going to put this here because it's least likely to give anyone a sore head, right? There, we've hidden most of the Z fighting. Wow, I, I'm actually gaining speed here, despite oh, my vertical speed, though, is once again too high. I want my vertical speed to be much lower. Suffers from thermal issues, it was correct. It just suffered from thermal issues that had not been addressed prior to launch. I'm sure if I tried this, I could come up with a proper descent trajectory which would not result in its destruction, but I you know, need to work on it. Vertical speed, 17 meters per second. And we're almost maintaining. Once I'll let it get down, and then we'll make one more burn. Have we got anywhere closer? 
I don't think we're we're getting anywhere near this. Uh, Zed fighting, it doesn't come from floating point inaccuracies. It comes from floating point precision and the calculations being slightly different for two different uh, code paths. And so it can flip from one way to the other, basically. <laughs> I think at this point I'm just going to try landing it, right? So let's just burn the last section of fuel here. I'm just going to try and bring it down. I'm just trying to lighten it as much as possible so I can ditch it in the ocean. Okay. Oh look, there's a shadow on the ocean! Which should be otherwise really hard to see. 160 meters per second. Man, this thing takes forever to lose all its, uh, its energy. I guess I could actually be using the braking. We're not heading for litho braking, this is hydro braking. Which is technically like aero braking. It, it, hydro braking is kind of like halfway between litho braking and aero braking. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a very similar one, but it's actually much bigger because it's real scale. The engine design is different. This is based on the Viking engine that was used in early Ariane rockets. So I thought that was a good one because it uses hypergalls. But, uh, you know, I'm still not sure I have the exact version that I want. Ugh. <sighs> This takes a really, really long time to land. Does your seat cushion become a flotation device? I don't know. Bronco Man, perhaps you could take it to your bath and find out. I mean, I'll tell you what, at least I can show that I can glide at a certain... I can control it. Now, it's just a question of how much authority I want to give it. And actually... I probably want to knock these, the control authority up on these things bit by bit while we get, you know, more and more control. Yeah, we're, we were never getting to that thing. <laughs> well, I've always heard it said that, uh, you know, a well-designed aircraft should have the same number of takeoffs and landings. I'll control the seven seas with my seat cushion. I see. Okay, this is still taking forever to bleed off speed. You know what? I'm going to actually start using the reaction control system as a braking system. Right? So I'm going to push it in the opposite direction to make sure that we can actually slow down enough when we get to the water. It's almost 3 a.m. in Michigan. Hey, I have a lot of people that came from Michigan to California. I know quite a few of you. Hey, are you going to get back into EVE Online with a new alpha uh, free-to-play? You know what? Probably um, I might, but you know what? I'm going to make a video. Uh, there was some discussion on Twitter about how you made your money on EVE, and I thought, I have a really pretty good story about how I made money in EVE Online. Because I used a lot of interesting, you know, market techniques and exploits and things like that. Okay, what is my altitude? It's one kilometer up. So it's really hard to tell where the ocean is. I mean, I see that shadow, so I'm hoping that that's correct. One kilometer. Yeah, I'm basically holding uh, N. Because I want to slow this thing down. Oh, notice that we're getting aerodynamic effects. We're getting Mach effects. So I just need to get it to an altitude where I can glide it and then just bleed off as much speed as possible.
there we go, and still breaking. I'm going to take this control surface and wind up this, give pitch authority, pitch authority. So we're going to ha there is a mod that will do that dynamically, incidentally, right? So it's just that when we were at high speeds, the responsiveness of the control surfaces was actually making us unstable. Okay, 400 meters up. Speed is still 200 meters per second. But you know what? This has such big wings, and it's actually pretty light now that we've burned most of the fuel. So I just need to very carefully cut my speed down. God, this is so tedious. It's so tedious watching me do this. Like there's so little to do, but just watch the speed go down. It's, it's watching speed go down simulator. You wish there was an instrument landing system? You know what? If there was an instrument landing system, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't work in the middle of the Atlantic. Time to burn fuel. I, I, I am burning fuel. I'm burning hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to leave this behind because there's no use for it. Okay, here we go. Keeping my vertical speed reasonable. Descending at about 3 meters per second. I'm obviously not going to bring up my undercarriage. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just keep that happening. Okay, we're down to 160 meters per second. This is... It needs to get so much slower than this. It needs to get... Why are there no aero forces slowing them down? No, there, there are. There's tons of aero forces, but it's just such a good glider. Because I really make good gliders, apparently. Also, I didn't put air brakes on this thing. And I'm kind of using all my control surfaces for keeping it pointed roughly the right way. 200 meters up. It's pretty... It is flying pretty well, I gotta say. 160, 150, 140. Descent speed is 6 meters per second. Look at that shadow there. That shadow is my date with destiny, but not yet. No, we are bringing that nose up. Keeping that high. Keeping that speed. The only thing is we want to make sure we don't stall. I, I do have ferrum aerospace on this as well. So this is the semi-realistic version of the aerodynamics. Okay, speed down to 120 meters per second. That is a mere 400 and something kilometers per hour. Once we get to 110 meters, or once we get to 100 meters per second, that will be 360 kilometers per hour, which is still way faster than I would ever like to land at. 100 meters per second. Look, we are now into double digits, and I am... Setting my attitude quite my uh, at angle of attack quite high. Oh, now I look at it, we're losing. Okay. Oh, come on! Pulling, 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 pulling. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what the heck? That does not make any sense. Oh, he died as well. Ah! Yep, yeah, okay. Oh, wait, what? This thing survived? No, it didn't. Oh, look, they could have just jumped into the crew cabin and survived. Ha! <laughs> life support, life support, stuff, stuff, bits, stuff. Man, they should have just got into the crew compartment and they would have stayed alive. <laughs> Look at this thing. Eight color. Kerbal physics. Kerbal physics. Yeah, some of these parts might in fact make it to Africa. Where they will meet the Kraken. <laughs> there will be no next time because I really need to get to sleep. Uh. <laughs> 
No, no, you don't want the landing gear. The landing gear would cause bad, bad, bad mojo. So yes, uh, I'm surprised we got as far as we did. We still need to work on the descent. I need to work on making that upper stage actually robust against heating. I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm sure there's something I can do. But yes, uh, you guys have an awesome evening. Have a great day. I will see you guys around. And until the next time, I'm Scott Manley. Sorry, I cut the volume first. Fly safe.